Okay, this is going to be part one in a two-part series on trailer air systems. Uh, this part one, we're just going to be going over the air brake system. So we're going to be taking it from the glad hands all the way down the tubing to the air tank and the uh, service and emergency relay valves out to the brake chambers. Uh, and then in part two, we'll cover some of the more complicated systems with the uh, air suspension. So we'll talk about the plumbing to the high control valve. We'll talk about the plumbing to the uh, auto inflation uh, system for the tires. We'll talk about some of the other plumbing for some of the air accessories that aren't air brake. Uh, but this first part, we're just gonna be going over air brake. And uh, as we go through this and we talk about uh, our two systems that we have on the trailer, our supply slash emergency and our service, uh, we're going to pretend that the air that goes into these glad hands is spray painted red or blue. So I got a little pointer here uh, with a little red air molecule and we're going to kind of follow this down the line and we're going to show you how the air travels through the plumbing and how it gets to each valve and eventually to the brake chamber or the other trailer systems uh, when we get to part two. All right, we're gonna start with the emergency slash supply uh, glad hand. So when the driver's in the cab and he wants to get moving, so right now the trailer with no air to it, uh, the parking brake is applied, so this trailer can't move. So he's gonna hook up his red glad hand and he's gonna hit that uh, red uh, trailer supply valve in the tractor and it's gonna put constant air pressure out to here. So it's gonna fill this up to whatever the governor uh, cutoff is and whatever it's setting the tractor pressure to, uh, it's gonna equalize the trailer uh, supply system to the same pressure. All right, so air is going here. We'll follow our little air molecule. Now this little T right here, this isn't typical on most trailers. This trailer has interior lights and they don't want the interior lights on draining the battery when it's going down the road. So when the brakes are released and the driver's rolling down the road, air pressure comes out here. Here's a little air molecule and a bunch of his little air molecule buddies are backing them up and they're putting pressure on this valve in here or rather the switch and it's opening the circuit to those uh to that interior lights so the lights aren't going on down the road when the trailer's parked and there's no air on here they can have the interior lights and they can do their work but so we're just going to ignore this little part right now typically a trailer uh the air tubing is just going to go straight down into the upper coupler so we'll follow this air molecule it goes into the upper coupler travels down here exits the upper coupler and goes above the cross members and travels down the length of the trailer till it exits the trailer and enters into the bogey. Once it enters the bogey, the final destination for the red glad hand is the emergency relay valve right here. The emergency relay valve has two main jobs um, it does a couple things, but its two main jobs is to fill up the air tank, the supply air, and it's to release the brake. So right now our, our parking brake is applied. There's a big spring in the back of this spring brake chamber right here that is exerting its force on this push rod, which is pushing the slack adjuster, which is rotating the S-cam, which is applying the brakes. So we have to release this big spring right here, and to do that, there's a diaphragm in this brake chamber. It's just a big, tough balloon. Like So air enters into this port right here. I know it's this port because this port is offset more toward the spring brake portion of the brake chamber and they're, they're offset. So this is the one for the service side. So air is gonna enter here. It's gonna inflate this diaphragm and the diaphragm is gonna push back that spring and it's gonna leave this relatively free. There's a small spring in here and it has the return springs and the brakes, but it'll leave the, the brakes released. All right. so. Air is going to come in here, inflate that diaphragm, push back the spring, and then our brakes released. All right. The other job that the emergency relay have, uh, emergency relay valve has, is it to fill up this air tank. So in the air brake system, the only thing that's using this air in the air tank is the braking system, the service brakes. So this air is coming in here. Again, we'll follow our little air molecule. It's entering the emergency relay valve. It's going down and it's releasing our brakes in the brake chamber and simultaneously filling up the air in the air tank. There's two different, two basically different styles uh, of emergency relay valve. There's a service brake priority and a spring brake priority. This is known as a spring brake priority. So even if I drain out all the air in this air tank, well, if I go to put air on the red glad hand, it'll release the brakes right away and then start filling up the air tank. 
If you have a service brake priority air tank, it'll start filling up the air tank and it won't release the brakes until it gets to a certain pressure. So this air right here being filled by the red glad hand is what's used when you make service brake applications. And we're gonna talk about the service brake next. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about the, uh, the service system. So the service, again, we were talking about the emergency slash supply glad hand. That driver hits the red uh, trailer supply valve in the tractor and it's putting constant air pressure on here. So, and, uh, and actually the, one of the other jobs of the emergency relay valve, if it senses a breakaway, a catastrophic loss in air pressure, if we would automatically take off the glad hand or if we cut the line, the emergency relay valve senses that loss of pressure and automatically applies the spring brakes, the parking brakes. So, the, um, so that's one of the other jobs, the emergency relay valve. But the, the service relay valve only has one job. When that driver presses on the brake pedal, when he's driving down the road, so his brakes are released and he's driving down the road, when the driver presses on the brake pedal, depending on how much pressure he's putting, if he's only putting half pedal, if he's only putting a little bit of pressure, it might only put 40 or 50 PSI out to here. Uh, if he's doing a full brake application, it could put 100, 120 PSI out to here. But this glad hand only sees pressure when the, when the driver hits the brake pedal. If uh, there was a little gremlin on the back of uh, the driver's tractor and he pulled off the, the blue glad hand while he was driving, the driver would be none the wiser. He, the, no alarms would go off. The only time that he would know is when he's starting to make a brake application, number one, his air would start dropping down really quickly because air would just be dumping out of his glad hand. And uh, he'd notice uh, poor braking performance because his loaded trailer would have no, no brakes. So no air is on this until the driver hits the brake pedal. And again, it's proportional. So if he's only pressing it a little bit, 10, 15 PSI, it's only gonna put 10 or 15 PSI out to this uh, glad hand. And it's gonna travel down the system to the service relay valve. So let's go ahead and follow that and say the driver's trying to come to a stop. He's hitting that uh, brake pedal. And let's say he's putting a 50 PSI brake application out here. We're gonna follow this little blue air molecule down the line. All right, we're gonna stop here, or start here rather. And again, just like the emergency relay valve, or rather, <laughs> just like the supply slash emergency line, or entering in the under upper coupler. Traveling the same path, entering up over the cross members, traveling down the length of the trailer. Exiting out here, this blue air line, and again, entering into the bogey. Now, before we talk about the service relay valve, I want to talk about this right here. Notice that the blue air line takes a pit stop at the emergency relay valve. The reason why we have this is known as anti-compounding. So right now, the parking brake is applied. There's a big ass spring in here, exerting its force on the push rod and then applying the brakes. There's a lot of force behind this. But believe it or not, the pressure made from a brake application is more than the pressure exerted from the spring. So if you add the pressure uh, exerted from the spring and you add air pressure from the service brake application, again, this airline is going into our service diaphragm, it's inflating that, you can compound the brake. These brakes are only made to take so much pressure. So if you put the pressure from the spring plus the pressure from a service brake application, you can damage equipment. Older equipment used to happen all the time. We'd come underneath the trailer and we'd see push rods bent in like a U. Most likely the anti-compounding anti uh, feature on that system failed or wasn't there at all. Um, but you can damage components. So basically what this anti-compounding does, if there's no air pressure, if there's no brakes released, it doesn't want you to be able to deliver air pressure out to the service relay valve and make a brake application. So all this T, this is just a T right here. So all this is doing, when there's air pressure here, this valve moves and it basically blocks off this, this uh, port right here and allows air pressure to build up. It allows this air molecule to travel through here and his air molecule buddies to build up pressure and act on this service relay valve, which lets air out of the tank to the brake chambers. So. This plumbing right here, this T is just there. This, this would work just fine. You'd have brakes and everything just fine if you took this T out and just put a straight union in here, connected this blue line to this blue line, you wouldn't notice the difference. The problem would be is if you're sitting on a hill or, or if you're sitting in traffic and you apply your parking brake and then traffic starts to let up, so you put your foot on the brake so you don't drift backwards 
and then you're putting a service brake application when you have the parking brake on and you can mess up components. So what this does, and every system's different, this one right here ex exhausts the air out of this port right here. If I put air to the service side without the emergency brakes being released, you'll feel air dumping out of here. And it's doing its job. That's not an air leak. That's it, the anti-compounding doing its job. Other systems, they'll exhaust the air out of the, the red glad hand and it'll go all the way up to the glad hand and it'll, tr it'll exit out of the tractor protection valve. Um, so it depends on the type of emergency relay valve that you have. Um, but getting back to the service relay valve, let's pretend that our, everything is correct and we have our brakes released. We have this air molecule coming through here. Um, it starts to go in here, but this, this valve is blocked off, so it lets the air pressure build up travel to the service relay valve. Once the air enters the service relay valve, and remember this air right here, we're tending it's spray painted blue from the blue glad hand, all right? So we got blue air going into this service relay valve. That air acts on a piston in here and lets air from the air tank go out to the brake chamber to make a brake application. So this blue air never sees the brake chamber. It's red air, it, red air from the emergency relay valve filling up this air tank. That's why we call it a relay valve. It's a small pressure signal from the control, from the, from the brake pedal. So let's say that it's at 50 PSI. 50 PSI acts upon this piston and allows 50 PSI from the air tank just at a larger volume going out to the brake chambers. That's why we have relay valves. If you had to wait, if you, you know, if the, if the driver hit a, a, hit the brake pedal and was making a brake application and you had to wait for the air to go all the way through the glad hand, travel through all this air line, then enter the brake chamber and start inflating the diaphragm, you would have brake lag. Your front tractor brakes would be applying way before your rear brakes because it, it took all this time to, to build up the pressure in the tubing and then it had to inflate the, the diaphragm on the brake chambers. This air, again, we're pretending it's spray painted blue, never sees the brake chamber. It's air from the air tank. This air acts on a piston and again, it's proportional. So if the driver's making a 15 PSI brake application, that 15 PSI acts on this piston and only allows 15 PSI of, of worth of air to come out just at a larger volume so the, the, the brakes can be applied quicker. If you don't have that, then you have brake, brake lag. And again, the emergency relay valve works the same way when you go to release the brakes. As long as there's air in the air tank, it helps to release the brakes quicker and then it'll fill up your air tank. So that service brake application is coming in here. The air is acting on this piston. It's moving it down and it's allowing um, the same amount of pressure at a larger volume out of this air tank. And it's exiting out, that's red. Remember, it's coming from the air tank. So the air coming out of this valve is gonna be red. We're gonna follow the hose all the way to that front port on the brake chamber. Once it gets there, it's coming in here. And again, just like this spring brake portion, air is filling up behind a, a big diaphragm. It's inflating the diaphragm, which is pushing a pressure plate, which is pushing the push rod, pushing the slack adjuster, and applying your brakes. All right, so now that we've uh, we made a brake application and uh, air, air has built up inside of the surface part of the brake chamber and it's applying the brake, now, how do we release that pressure once we want to start rolling again? All right, so when the driver lets off on the pedal, this airline right here, this blue airline, that air is exhausted. Some have a quick release on the glad hand. Uh, some it gets uh, exhausted all the way up at the tractor, but it exhausts this air, and the air that was in the brake chamber travels all the way back to the service relay valve and then exits out of the exhaust there so this is a quick release exhaust and again you want to the, the brakes to release quickly you only have like uh, it depends for the length of the trailer if you just have a tractor if you have doubles but there's a certain amount of time that you have that after you let go of the brake uh, application for it to release the air so that's why we have these quick release valves built into the valve it quickly releases the air out of the uh, brake chamber and get you going again so then our brake uh, application is released and we're rolling. 
All right, now to kind of wrap it up, the, uh, we're gonna pretend the uh, driver is done for the day. He's gonna go park the vehicle. He uh, pulls out on that red trailer supply valve and it exhausts the air out of this supply line. When that happens, the emergency relay valve uh, senses that, that loss of pressure and automatically sets the parking brake. So if you notice when you hit that, when you pull that red uh, trailer supply valve, you hear a psh, psh. That psh, psh is the air that was inflating the diaphragm holding back the spring being exhausted out of the exhaust port on the emergency relay valve and then there's a check valve inside of here so when you park the trailer for the day this air tank shouldn't bleed out um, it should keep your air pressure there's a check valve inside of here if you're ever working on a trailer and you uh, set the parking brake and you, you you remove the glad hand and you hear air coming out of the glad hand a lot of times that's a problem uh, with the uh, check valve inside of the emergency relay valve failing. Um, so, all right, so that should wrap things up. That's the uh, air brake system.